You faced some t very tough questions last week at the city council hearing, right? And saying that there wasn't enough warning about the air quality, right? And if you looked outside the window, you kind of saw what was going mm -hmm. on. Did the criticism surprise you at all? The, the criticism didn't surprise me, yeah. um, but I think there's, there's another question here of just really sort of an understanding of how difficult it is to forecast air quality, mm -hmm. right? And I think we also, you know, in New York City emergency management, um, we plan for novel events. We have a all hazard planning mechanism mm -hmm. that allows us to be adaptable and flexible to respond to emergencies we've never seen before, which is what this is. But I think we have to remember air quality is much more difficult to forecast yeah. than other types of weather events, which are also honestly difficult to forecast. But this, we had a forecast uh, that showed unhealthy levels for sensitive groups, mm -hmm. and we saw it spiking on June 7th to extremely hazardous levels. And I think our response, whether it was distributing hundreds of thousands of masks, mm -hmm. closing down parks, shutting down, uh, sorry, shutting down beaches, um, adjusting ferry schedules, uh, making sure that we're getting advisories and information out to the public. I think we had a very effective response considering the short lead time we had on this type of event. Yeah, and I heard you say sensitive groups here and, and during your testimony as well, but mm -hmm. it was in the 400 level range, which was pretty dangerous for everyone. Yes, that's correct. On, on, on the 7th, it, yeah. it got into hazardous levels. That was the only day we saw hazardous levels. That was the day that we had the first of the mayor's press conferences. Mm -hmm. That was the day that we really started to do a lot of the larger efforts to make sure we were keeping, especially our most vulnerable New Yorkers. Safe. Yeah, and I understand the difficulty because we had our own forecast. Yeah. I was working the morning show that day, anchoring. Yeah. We were talking about the air quality and, and how smoke is so difficult to predict based on wind patterns and so on and so forth. But once you saw what was going on, the city was accused of not acting quickly enough, especially with the alerts that went out to the public. In hindsight, looking back on it, could there have been earlier alerts saying this could be coming our way? What did you make of that? So one again, the forecasting for this is very difficult yeah. to do, right? It's done by the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. Mm -hmm. They have remarkable meteorologists who do that work there. But it is just very difficult and complex to forecast air quality. Generally, we have about 24 hours. Mm -hmm. The forecast for the six was about 118, which is just slightly above moderate levels. The forecast uh, for the 7th was, I think it was a little bit higher in the yeah. hundreds, right? We did not expect this to go into the unhealthy category for all New Yorkers, certainly not hazardous levels. Mm -hmm. And just to put this in perspective, I think there's been two times, according to New York State, in the yeah. last 10 years, where we've seen unhealthy levels of air quality across New York. So this is a novel event. And what we do in these situations is we have flexible planning, scalable mm -hmm. planning, where we have a variety of mechanisms that we can tap into to communicate with the public, distribute masks, uh, communicate with all of our agencies, and making sure we're taking care of our city's mm -hmm. most vulnerable. And I think the numbers reflect that. If you look at emergency room visits, which is the number one indicator mm -hmm. of how well we did, we saw a spike of about 100 emergency vi room visits across the entire city, mm -hmm. 100, across yeah. the entire city of over 8 million for asthma-related sort of issues, which is on par with what we saw in April during pollen season. Okay, so overall, when you look back on it, would you have done anything differently? So I think one of the things that really reinforced for me is we are in an age of extreme weather. Mm -hmm. We see this in the Southwest with extreme heat. We see this in Vermont and upstate New York with the massive amounts of rainfall they received in the last couple of weeks. And I think for that, there's a lot of education we need to do going yeah. forward to make sure New Yorkers are ready for heat. I mean, we're, we have high heat, you know, this right week right now. We have, um, you know, incredible rainfall rates that mm -hmm. we're seeing. We have coastal storms. And air pollution has to be added to that list of things that we really need to make sure New Yorkers are familiar with. They know what they need to do. They understand what types of actions they need to take at different levels mm -hmm. and, you know, how we can better communicate with them. Right. So because of all of those things you just laid out, right, and the fact that these things are no longer one in 1,000 year events, they're happening more frequently, is there a better way overall besides notify NYC, which we talked about on the morning show last week for yep. flooding, is there a better way to communicate with the general public? So I think there's been a lot of criticism, unfortunately, of notify NYC. Mm -hmm. Notify NYC is our primary messaging mechanism primary, not only messaging mechanism. Right, and let me just stop, because if you're somebody who can't, doesn't have a smartphone or is elderly, doesn't know how to use it, you yeah. don't get the alert from Notify NYC. Yeah. So we do a lot of other things. Like for this air event, we worked with the Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities, mm -hmm. Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs, uh, Department for the Aging, Department of Social Services. They have a whole host of tools they use to communicate with vulnerable New Yorkers and other New Yorkers mm -hmm. beyond Notify NYC. Okay. Right? We can do press, we can do shows like this, we have yeah. social media, right? There's a whole bunch of mechanisms. 
notify NYC. Every New Yorker should sign up for it. NYC.gov backslash notify 311. Uh, available in 14 mm -hmm. languages, including American Sign Language, over a million subscribers. That's the primary mechanism, not the only mechanism. Right. So what else do you think you should do? Well, I think some of the things that, that we just talked about. Social media. Okay. Um, press at, you know, hits like this. And then also we do a lot of stuff with our community-based organizations. So at Emergency Management, we have a network of over 50 community-based organizations we work with. Department of Health has mm -hmm. a large network of community-based organizations they work with. Those organizations have members, people they care for mm -hmm. that they get the message out to. There's a lot of sort of ways that we can do this, yeah. canvassing, et cetera, yeah. to make sure we're getting the message out to the public. All right. So much to talk about. Commissioner, good to have yeah. you here. And Great thank you. Here. Sign thank up you. For, I do get the alerts on Notify NYC, good, so good. everybody should sign up. Appreciate you being here to talk about Thanks this. Thanks for having me. All right.